Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it's time for some volcano news. My last report was about this new fissure that opened up, or actually extension of the first fissure that gradually developed into those two events that we have been seeing in live TV for the last three weeks or so. But now for the third time we see the land open up again, meaning it's the same fissure, just new opening to it. Here we can see one day's efficiency of magma transfer from vent number two. Number two is pumping the lava down to a new valley called Merardalur, and this is it. And here we have the same location in night vision, and this was pretty impressive. There is the third webcam up there, but the cords that were providing it with electricity and such, they didn't handle the lava flowing over it. We are always learning something new about electronics. So the scenario that we are having now is that the first vents that opened up, they are filling up the first valley. Eruption number two is pumping the lava straight down to this bigger valley, just the north of the first one. And the part of the fissure that opened up last night, that one is pumping the lava into the first valley, where the first vents are. That valley will gradually fill up. But that does, of course, depend on the flow. But then it's the experts. What are the experts saying now? I'm always curious about that. And yesterday, I heard someone say that uh, this uh, eruption was behaving uh, somewhat like expected in some ways, but in other ways it was behaving very strangely. He mentioned especially how uh, smoothly this uh, eruption started. Not even the extensive net of seismometers that are all around there could detect it. It was the local people who reported the glow when the eruption started. So that was the first surprise. And the experts are saying now that it is as someone just stuck a pin through the crust. Down to the roof of the magma chamber down there. And from there the lava is just pumping itself up. The ordinary scenario is that the overpressure under there is uh, ripping up the ground and uh, that happens with a whole lot of action. Then we have the fact that the biggest fires occur during the first days when the pressure is uh, at its peak. But uh, that just uh, ends the story now. This is something totally different. The magma chamber that's under there, it had like 800 years to build up pressure. Then this started with a silent uh, fissure eruption. The fissure eruption uh, turned into a crater that had uh, two vents, and now again it is changing into a fissure. So what next? Will this eruption eventually decide what it's going to be? Fissure eruption or crater? Or maybe just some kind of uh, tourist uh, blend of uh, both with uh, special effects uh, now and then? So I have plenty of questions. And one of them is, will we see a new shield uh, volcano there? Will this continue as a fissure eruption, or will this uh, create another mountain ridge, like uh, this one here, nearby? But the other option is that this will develop into one or two vents, like we've seen before, ever-growing lava pond that will work as a distribution center in order to create a monster of a volcano, called a shield volcano, because of their shape. So I'm showing you again this photo of uh, Skjaldbreiður, Iceland's uh, most famous uh, shield volcano, perfectly shaped, and I was reading that uh, this mountain could have been around four, five hundred years in the making, meaning uh, four, five hundred years of similar uh, lava pumping like we are seeing now in this valley, Merardalur. And uh, Merardalur is located on top of uh, Mount Faradalsjall, which is the biggest landmass on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, Mount Faradarsjall has been free of eruption for the last 6,000 years. But uh, judging from the size of it and other nearby volcanoes, there is something big uh, under there, for sure. So this possibility is just getting uh, more and more real that uh, this might just be yet another shield volcano at its uh, early stages. And that is huge news. I was also reading that there seems to be balance between the amount of magma that's coming up from a mantle and the outflow through those three places where it's erupting now around 10 cubic meters per second. And the productivity of the magma chamber near the mantle is consistent with the outflow or estimated to be around 15 cubic meters per second. 
and uh, one of that uh, balance continues there is no stop to flow from this magma chamber that has had uh, 800 years to reload from the last eruption on the peninsula so the biggest question and the question that no one can answer is will this go on for days weeks years decades or centuries nobody knows i've actually heard that earthquakes and the plate movements could uh, stop this but I somehow have the feeling that this is a part of bigger picture. I have mentioned it before. Even for the fact that we have way less earthquakes now, we have seen a new earthquake swarm moving east lately, closer to the capital. And I've seen some weird spots hit by earthquake swarms. Spots that I've never seen hit by earthquakes before. So even for this pressure release that we are seeing now, there is something more going on. And one of the questions that I really would like to see answered to, but uh, they have been unclear, is that uh, are all the volcano systems on the peninsula fed from the same source? Is something under uh, Mount Faradalsjall that is uh, controlling the whole show? And is this eruption maybe just a fraction of a larger uh, lava intrusion? And are we just seeing few drops of a bigger splash that might be on the way? I'm also asking this because uh, I have this time lapse that I made. It's uh, covering 14 months and I'm leaving link to it, showing you what kind of action has been going on all around the peninsula for all this time, resulting in uh, one of the smallest eruptions that we have ever seen in Iceland. And the earthquakes are still going on, so something more is going on, is my belief. But uh, I'm of course leaving it to the experts to make the final judgment on that. I am just seeing it as uh, I would be looking at a homepage with the news and uh, my mouse doesn't work. All of those uh, juicy headlines, but I cannot get further into the stories. That's a bit uh, how I feel now. But I'm pretty sure that there are uh, geologists and volcanologists out there that uh, feel the same. So I have to handle it. But when I was looking at the map yesterday, thinking about if all this lava would come up, where would it go? North or south? East or west? Or all directions? And if it gets high enough, we have one good news. A new mountain might work as a windbreaker for Reykjavik and the Reykjanes Peninsula. And believe me, Reykjavik needs it. It is of course forbidden to say it, especially in tourism, but I've always said that many of our forefathers, they were extremely unlucky. The troublemakers from Norway came to Iceland. And the first thing they did was to make trouble for all the generations to come by building a capital on the wrong place. Perhaps one of the worst places in Iceland. The bitter truth about Iceland and Icelanders and the trouble that we have been getting us in. We are stuck with Reykjavik there and we will have to live with it. But best of all would be to learn something from it. But when I look at some of the new building land around Reykjavik, I really doubt that we have learned anything since our forefathers came here. But enough about that. This is Iceland today. Exciting times, strange. We hope they won't pose more threat to the capital than it has already done. But I think we should get ready for some kind of long-term troubles. And I also want to say to those of you who are new or not up to date in this matter, that uh, in this moment there are no towns or people at risk. The lava flow is uh, on our dream location, if we can say so. But the biggest news is that this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger from the experts' uh, perspective. And this might be a story that uh, will be overtaken by the next generation of Icelanders. So I will continue to keep you posted about this with my own style as usual and with that i'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island iceland